Addicted to smoking, gambling, sex, old habits die hard. Yet today there's a new generation of dependencies, designer drugs, mobile phones, just some of the addictions that are demanding fresh solutions. Welcome to this week's show. Coming up, in the UK, heroin and cocaine consumption is falling, but the use of so-called clubbing drugs is on the rise. We visit a treatment centre designed specifically for this new generation of patient. Next, we head to Oregon, home to the first and worst methamphetamine epidemic in the United States. A pioneering program is forcing addicts to decide between treatment or giving up their children. And the early results are remarkable. And finally, what happens when a prescription drug triggers compulsive behaviours? We investigate the dangerous side effects of Rekeep, a medicine to treat Parkinson's disease that has led certain patients to develop gambling and sex addictions. special type of gathering known here in Paris as an almost perfect party here. There's more mocktails than cocktails, evidence that alcohol and other mood enhancing drugs are not always necessary to have a good time. But really this concept bucks a broader trend and that's more young people are not only turning to so-called party drugs but they're becoming addicted. And in the UK this new type of drug user has taken the health system by surprise. France Cat's Louis Massey with this next report. At this drug addiction unit in Leeds, in the north of England, a new type of patient is knocking on Dr. Roach's door. Until just over a year ago, Robert was addicted to ketamine, a tranquilizer that causes hallucinations and sometimes horrific long-term side effects. Started off with cramps, pain, weeing blood, our wean every two minutes. That's no exaggeration. The pain becomes horrendous. It becomes unmanageable. I'm actually self-prescribing myself morphine. I lost my job. I'd stopped hanging around with my friends. My life was just taking ketamine. That's, that's all I did. It's a new type of dependence and one that is little known. So when Robert wanted to stop, he couldn't find the right support to help him. Um, I don't feel in the detox unit, although they did the very best for me, I don't feel like that it were suited for a ketamine user because the, the pain were horrific. For Robert, like many others, it all started on a night out with friends. Ketamine, methadrone, GBL, these are all known as club drugs. Users are generally young workers who are more party people than junkies, but more and more of them are becoming hooked. This clinic in London was set up especially to help people addicted to club drugs. Okay. Here's another client too. Uh, he is using GBL every day. Daily. Daily, but only about two or three times a day. So I don't think he needs a full detox, mm. but use your judgement. This clinic offers different treatment and advice from classic drug rehab centres. A normal drug clinic is expert at crack and heroin, but they can be quite ignorant about some of these things. Some of these new drugs are very different. They're used in a different way, in a different context. They have different dangers. It's an alarming problem, and the club drug clinic has been set up to address it all in one place, open to everyone across London. Specialist knowledge is required to monitor um, the dozens of substances and drugs that are being used uh, and abused to get users high. This is just a list of the drugs China White, Gogain, Methoxetamine, Buzz Twist, Charlie Sheen. Here we've got 12 new drugs, um, most of them legal highs, that presented to the clinic in the last month. And what, what one of the roles of the clinic is to try and understand the trends of the, the, the new drugs. Type in by. GBL. As for getting a hold of these and drugs, of it couldn't be easier. Let's just click on the first one. Now it's sold as a, as a graffiti cleaner, so you're not buying a drug for human consumption, you're buying a product legitimately. Put your details in, put it in your cart, order it. That was quite easy. And then you would click on the growing range and abundance of club drugs could well make any future regulation a serious challenge. Today, addictologists are using a rather simple way to draw people away from their dependencies, and that's family and children. In Oregon, in the United States, a pioneering program is asking addicts to choose between a drug rehabilitation treatment or having their children placed in foster care. And often the decision is made much faster than you might think. A pioneering solution to one of the worst drug epidemics in America, a state-sponsored program in Oregon, one of the worst affected areas, is proving that children can be key to helping their parents break drug and alcohol dependency. 
Addicts who run into the law are given a choice, lose your child to foster care or enter treatment and get them back. We got our son back while we were in the residential phase of treatment. So to actually um, have him back made me more grateful for this treatment program. Parents deemed fit to care for their children are housed in a residential facility as they enter rehab, a model pioneered by On Track in Medford, a city once at the heart of the nation's methamphetamine use. They are threatened by the loss of their children who they love and to be able to keep their children and be a good mom or a good dad is a tremendous motivator. With 12 providers operating in the state, the number of children going into foster care has halved. 97% of participating parents complete treatment. Advocates say for every dollar spent on the scheme, 5 to 10 are saved on state services. It's also reduced the human cost of drug addiction, weakening the link of delinquency between parent and child. We know there's a relationship between the foster care system or children who go into foster care and later um, become involved in the justice system, both as juveniles and adults. So there's just this ripple effect if you can help a family achieve recovery. Bringing children into the treatment program has had surprising benefits. It's not only about being in recovery, but it's actually taught me how to be a father. However, with an estimated 300,000 addicts in need of treatment and only 85 beds available for children in Oregon, help remains out of reach for most families caught up in drug addiction. I'm addicted to shopping. My limit is 1,500 euros. Frank Sales can bring out the shopaholic in the most prudent of buys, and some of us are better than others at exerting self-control. But imagine if your addiction is the result of another medication. That's what certain sufferers have discovered after taking Rakip, a drug to treat Parkinson's disease. This next report follows one patient who's experiencing the compulsive side effects firsthand. Compulsive and unusual behaviours such as excessive gambling. Rakeep, a Parkinson's drug, has changed this man's life for better and for worse. When Desiderio Bartran began to take the drug, symptoms such as shaking and stiffness began to fade, but disturbing side effects appeared. I remember asking my father for money because I couldn't make ends meet, bringing the cheque to the bank and the day after being back at the casino. I hated myself for that. But Bartran found online that he was not alone. 15% of patients taking the drug have reportedly experienced compulsive shopping, gambling and hypersexuality. Rakeep releases dopamine to the part of the brain that controls movements, but at the same time the hormone affects another part of the brain that controls decision-making and the feeling of reward, which leads to side effects. Dr. François Tison has been treating Parkinson's patients for years. He keeps a close eye on drugs' side effects. Do you go online? A little bit, but only to get practical information. I don't shop online. Have you recently bought useless things compulsively? No, I haven't. It's hard for patients to talk about compulsive behaviours. So I think it's up to neurologists to take the first step. Efforts have been made to inform patients. Didier Jambard went bankrupt after taking Rekeep. In March 2011, he won his case against the pharmaceutical company that makes the drug. The company had failed to warn patients early enough about devastating side effects. That brings us to the end of this week's health show from dangerous territory here in the middle of a French department store during the sales. I look forward to seeing you as always next time.